I have to start by saying congratulations. Oh, thank you Designer so much. Of the year oh my for gosh. Hushing home. Thank you. Do you know that what an phone honor. call when I when I get to tell you is my favorite thing that I do all year. Right. Well, it was my favorite day all year. It was fun. Yeah. Thank you. So well deserved. Thank you. You've had such a great career, and it wasn't until I got into reading about you that I fully understood the scope of your career. It's right. been broad. It has. I've and worked hard. You have worked really hard. And that's one of the themes today about okay. what it takes to do this kind of work, right. which is so fabulous. Thank you. I hope that all our viewers read the article in House and Home, the interview, because we go through your whole career and it's fascinating. I first heard of you as the girl who got to go and work with Nikki Haslam. Oh, right. Well, that was huge. Yeah. Yeah. And 13 years you spent with him. Yeah, it was an yeah, amazing chapter. And you came back with a different view of the world. Yeah, definitely. And, and also a different view of, you know, Toronto and Canada. You see everything with fresh eyes when you've been away um, for a while. And, you know, we have a, we have a design sensibility here um, that is, you know, that is, that's different than, than Europe. It's fresher. It kind of was my superpower when I was living in the UK to bring a North American design sensibility. So, you know, coming back, they say absence makes the heart grow fonder. Um, yeah, and I just saw Toronto in a new and fresh way and, and all the things that we have to offer. So a room like this starts with what kind of inspiration? Well, it starts with the client for sure. Clients don't necessarily know that they have a narrative, but they do. Um, from, you know, from who they are to what they look like to how they live. I kind of go in um, almost like an anthropologist and really um, get, to know, get to know them. And these clients? These clients are amazing. They're fun loving, they're young, glamorous. Um, she's very involved in the art world. Um, they've traveled a ton. You know, I've traveled so much. I've been in so many incredible houses. Um, but I, you know, it, it, it takes me bringing things to the table and taking a lot of risks, like trying things in the house. You know, you and I talked about pounding the pavement. I mean, I am out there. I just, am. Just tell all the young designers <laughs> that who think they're going to find it online. <laughs> I'm. Look, joy is not online. Like I schlep. I'm, I mean, we joke all the time and um, I am often in jeans and a t-shirt rummaging around some, you know, junk store or crawling over antiques. Um, I just think it's imperative to, um, you know, to find the unusual, to find the gems, to find the treasures. You really have to definitely love what you do to do that, but, but I do. I love a treasure hunt. Me too. Yeah. And so you find great stuff, you just buy it. Quite Not a bit, yes. Not necessarily with a client in mind. Absolutely. Much to my husband's chagrin. Because um, you won't find it when you need it. 100%. Yeah. And then also, so two things happen. I mean, clients will have strange things. Um, I've had, you know, clients bring things up from the basement that they've been hiding down there because they thought were hideous. Um, that I've ended up putting on a plinth and making, you know, a great I'm moment sure in a room. love that. Love it. And then... Um, and then, yeah, I do, I, I, I do find things that I just think are so interesting, like the black chintz in this room. If you say chintz to someone in this day and age, it does not necessarily evoke a positive thing, but how Okay, chic. this is fantastic, but look what you did with it. Exactly. This is not the typical shape. Right. Look what you did. Right. You, made, you did the back in a very, very fine corduroy. Yeah. And look what you did with the trim. Yeah. That's See, why. that would be a typical shape in, in Europe. Yes. To do lumbars like yes. that. Like if you think Robert Kai yes. and those kinds of And it's of becoming people. now it is, but it's not what I think of when I think of a, a chintz throw pillow. No, exactly. This is fantastic. Thank okay. you. Okay. You talked about historical references being mm. important and how you'll sit your clients down and show them from books. Yeah. Historical references to get them into the groove. What was the historical reference here? Well, I mean, full disclosure, I immediately thought about how connected this room was going to be to the garden. And there's a famous room in the Villa Necchi outside of Milan that's just sublime. And so I did sort of have 
that in mind. In mind. Well, that's yeah. you have to get your inspiration from somewhere. Exactly. What better place? Yeah. Now the windows are architecturally very strong. Yes. And they're not the period of the house. Not at all. And that, of course, was on purpose. Yes. Did you have to sell that idea to your clients? <laughs> no, not at all. They loved that immediately. So they they loved the idea of cross pollinating, you know, architectural and design languages because uh, it's just more interesting. You know, none yeah. of us want to live in a museum. We don't yeah. want to live in an old home. But if we can make the most of the traditional features and juxtapose it with some of this, you know, contemporary stuff, it gets that tension, which is like exciting. Important. Yeah. Talk about the wood ceiling because it's everywhere. Why are we doing wood ceilings? That's a really good question. Why are we doing wood ceilings? I don't know. It's so cozy. That's it's it. so cozy. It's cozy. Yeah. That's what it is. And, and it I... reminds you of rafters. Good point. Yeah, you're right. But of course, we faked these rafters. They're not really beams. No, they're not really beams. They're absolutely faux. Which is they're a just lot made... easier. This is actually just flooring on the ceiling. Okay. Let's Everybody listen it. to that. That's, <laughs> that is your best tip so far. Really? Use flooring on your ceiling. Yeah. Oh, good idea. Yes. You think everyone does that? They don't call it. I guess you're right. No. It's such a good idea. We managed to get this incredible ceiling height, so I needed to ground the room. We did actually kind of toy with the idea of terrazzo, but this is such a practical, you know, this is a family house, dogs, kids, you walk straight out to the garden. So this is like so practical, it's so interesting, and it grounds the room. It's great. Thank you. Did you have to sell that to your clients? A little bit, yeah, a That's little bit. A, that would be hard because Look, it's permanent. The, you can't say, well, if you don't like it, we'll change it. No, I mean, this, this takes time. I still do do renderings. Um, that's not something a lot of people do anymore. Again, it just, it takes, this takes time. You do hand rendering? I do hand rendering. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. A but, lot of people do computer generated re renderings. Yeah. But, and we do do some of that, yeah. but I would argue that computers are putting us into boxy environments. You know, computers by nature draw straight lines and boxes. True. Um, and not that there's anything wrong with some straight lines and boxes, but you know, we are organic people. The psyche really responds to serpentine shapes. Um, it's a primal thing. So you've got to get some softness in there. The bookcases, were they like that from the start? So um, I knew that we wanted to have a place that they could put like art and books and some of their travel pieces right. to make the room intimate, biographical, and, and also just, you know, sort of interesting. And then we just, you know, I, I just made it um, asymmetrical, it. so it, it wasn't static. But that happened as you were going. Yeah. Okay. What about your use of mirror? How do people know where to use mirror? You use it everywhere. So just use it everywhere. everywhere. Did you hear I, that? I've never put a mirror in that disappointed. Really? I've got it on my dining room ceiling. I've got it all over this house. You know, mirror, it sparkles, it's magic, it reflects light, and then it also doubles the room. Right. So I think it got a bad rap sort of after the 60s or 70s. Yeah, I think it did too. But then also it had seams in the wrong places. And true. And it was gray. True, true. It wasn't clear. It was yeah. Tinted rose. And, right. Know, we kind of <laughs> overdid it, right? Overdid it. I guess we overdid it. But your mirror is clean and clear and strategically used. Yeah. And your fireplace surrounds are often similar to this. I love right. this design. I'm really obsessed with fireplaces. Okay. Yeah. So this is a gas fireplace. Yeah. It looks great. Yeah. And the surround and the hearth are what you would use if it was wood burning. Exactly. Yeah. And I try as much as possible to make it look real. Yeah. I often even, um, so we actually did the wood cubbies here. I love here. that. It's an accessory. Or I'll, or I'll ask a client to, I'll put in a basket and stack it with logs and I put the fireplace tools so it looks as, you know, yeah. authentic as possible. Accessories, of course. So if someone wanted to design a room like this and they were called a designer because most people can't do this and if they can, they should be a designer, right? They call it yeah, designer. Yeah, true. <laughs> what, are you, what are you asking for? You can't just say eclectic. What are you asking for? Describe this style. Yeah, it's, you know what? I find it's so hard to articulate. It is definitely really eclectic. I mean, that's such an overused word and juxtaposed right. is such an but overused it's, word. It's definitely got a traditional aesthetic. Yeah. that has become modern. And you talked about the English and how they have all these rules for everything. Yep. I love what you said about toilet paper holders. Right. Never <laughs> install a toilet paper holder if you live in London. Yeah, oh God, no. That's Kiss a no-no. You have to put your toilet paper on a shelf or yep. in a basket. Absolutely. So they have these rules, which yep. seem a bit crazy. Well, they are crazy. Yeah. That's what we love about them. Yes, but then they break them. Exactly. And that's what we love about them the most. 
And maybe that's the thing. If you know enough yeah. about the history of interiors, then you'll feel more confident yeah. breaking the rules. So that lamp is fantastic. I, I think it's amazing. Now, there was a ladder that was in our cover shoot. Yeah. That ladder. It's one of my the favorite. Okay, where did it come from? Uh, I found it at Brown Rig in the UK. They found it in Amsterdam. It's Maison Jensen for any, you know, for historians. He was a, a major um, designer and furniture designer in the 40s. Um, I just had to have it. Um, I've never seen anything like it. And it just lives with you and goes wherever you go. Kind of. Okay. Yeah, I think I'd wear it if I could. Okay. Now we have Speaking to of wearing, I'm okay. just going to tell you, this is the impetus for my next room. Okay, these are great. <laughs> you have the best shoes. You are the shoe queen. Uh, I'm sorry. I might have to call you Imelda. <laughs> but imagine doing a room like that, like in lavender and brass. Could be super And so you actually go to the meeting for the design brief and you say to the client, this is the inspiration Sometimes. for your room. Trends. Let's just take two minutes on trends. Okay. Okay. What's coming that you want to try? I don't think I follow trends. I probably do more than I realize because obviously everything that's new is always exciting um, and we all want a piece of it. So I think I just try and taper it to, um, you know, to, to some pieces answering that exciting new moment and not going in whole hog. What is being done too much? <sighs> Um, oh God, white boucle. Okay. All the designers yeah. are talking about. Yeah. Done. Done. Um, scallops, I yeah. think. Scallops. Done. What about I mean, heavy veined marble? Well, you're kind of asking the wrong girl because there's a couple particular marbles that are being overused right now. But having said that, I'm, I think everything has a place. I mean, even white, also white boucle and scallops. Okay. Um, but it's just, um, it's just too much. Okay. of one thing or if a room has too many things that are current um yes yeah. it's, it's it looks like you just went out and bought everything yeah there's no curation and it's going and on. it's not going to age well you, yeah. you've got to mix it up you've got to have some tension yeah that's the other thing you said if something's been in style for 60 years or 100 years or 200 years it's probably not going anywhere good point which is a nice thing to include in your mix yeah exactly yes so if you are doing that you know super contemporary look i'll i'll bring in some antiques bring in a piece of brown furniture when you started decorating for yourself we we're just doing your own mix at home did you make any mistakes i mean i make mistakes all the time because i'm an experimenter my home's a laboratory. I also end up with things, you know, from show houses and stuff like that. That nobody's going to want to get by. <laughs> <laughs> so like many designers, yeah. you but have you a But you don't worry about that, right? No. No, so you have to make mistakes. Just try to make them on inexpensive things like your paint color. Exactly. As opposed to your stone floor. Exactly. Congratulations Thank again. Thank you, Linda. Thank you so we'll much. We love your work. Such an honor.